Did you get any offers to Fresno State or? No, I don't like them. I don't like them boys. Fresno State, they did offer me. I don't really like them. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not the biggest fan of them. Just like Boise State, they give them that they're physical. They give them that they work hard. They're some hard knocks, but I feel like we are too. And I feel like the more I hear about other teams, the more I just feel confident in us. Prove it. Miss tackles left and right all season long. Prove it. Prove you're the more physical team. Go out and prove it this weekend. I'm kind of coming at the coots here. We're heading into week seven of the college football season. Washington State University is heading down to Fresno State. This will be their sixth game of the year. They are currently four and one. After taking a loss to Boise State in Boise, they got a taste of the Ashton Genty experience, and they are looking to rebound against the Bulldogs, which is another future Pac-12 matchup. Dylan and I get into the Fresno State preview in this episode, as well as talking through the newly announced Ole Miss game for 2025. If you have a question or comment for us that you would like to have answered in next week's episode, make sure to comment below, send me a DM on Twitter or Instagram, and make sure to like and subscribe to The Couch GM for more content like this. But before we do, the sponsor of this podcast is Black Label Supplements. They are a forward-looking supplement company based here in the Pacific Northwest. I use them personally for all of my supplementation. Make sure to check out blacklabelsupplements.com. Use code COUCHGM for 15% off your order. Grind, hustle, win, repeat. And as always, if you or somebody you know is thinking of buying, selling, or refinancing any type of property, make sure to reach out to myself, Connor Webb, the Couch GM. I'm a full-time mortgage broker during the day when I'm not recording these sports videos. I'll have my contact information in the description of this video. And with that, let's get into the podcast. We're heading into week seven of the college football season. Washington State is heading to Fresno State, looking to rebound after a loss to Boise State following a bye week. But first, we have to react to the news that was released yesterday about WSU's schedule for 2025. It was announced that WSU will be heading to Oxford, Mississippi to face Ole Miss October 11th, 2025 in their first SEC showdown since when they went to Auburn back in 2013. I, I guess first off, Mississippi better start brewing more beer because the Cougs are coming. First off, insert the baby Billy Righteous Gemstones gif. I mean, talk about a fantastic game to get. You got Lane Kiffin and a lot of history there. Obviously, Washington State back uh, when he was still coaching at USC beat him 10-7 to and kind of started the motion of him getting left on the, the tarmac that year. But, I mean, first SEC opponent since 2013. Cougs darn near got that game as well. That's just going to be a fantastic road game for our, our Crimson brethren and sisters to travel to. I mean, uh, you know, bring the fireball, bring the beer. Uh, both fan bases very excited in the comments of, uh, you know, what was announced on X on Ole Miss's Twitter account. You had a couple of Ole Miss fans saying, I think, hey, we're going to get along just fine. And uh, I, I think that's the case. Um, that's now the seventh game. On the schedule, obviously, the uh, Mountain West Conference <laughs> schedule alliance fizzled out for unknown reasons. Schedule fizzled, fizzled out, lawsuit followed. But yeah, Fireball Joe, you could set up your tent in the parking lot at Ole Miss and get those going pregame. But yeah, I mean, Ole Miss right now is 5-1. and one. They're currently ranked ninth in the country. Obviously, it's Ole Miss. It's SEC football. It's going to be an insane opponent in an insane atmosphere. As many Cougs fans as we can get down there, let's let's make it happen. And you kind of talk about the the rest of the conference or the rest of the schedule for next year. They actually currently have five remaining openings. And I'll pull up a graphic here showing some other teams that currently have openings in their schedule and who Washington State might help, you know, fill out their schedule with. Dylan, you know, out of these schools, who do you think they might end up facing the Cougs? Well, when you kind of take a look at it, um, you have a lot. You, I think you have around... 20 Looks schools like 20. with openings. Yeah. Um, and then there's four schools that have two or more openings. You have us with five and you have Oregon state with six, obviously. Now the other two that make sense, university of Louisiana Monroe, maybe you can get them to come out to Pullman. Uh, and then Northwestern has two openings and, and you, they've got a lot of maintenance and they're redoing, uh, you know, their new stadium. They're like playing on an intermural intermural field this season. If, if you pull up that graphic, it's ridiculous to look at. And then, you know, some of the other schools, you have like a New Mexico State, if we're looking like regionally, uh, Baylor, USC is on the docket. You have Rutgers and then Notre Dame. I mean, how sweet would it be to go out to South Bend as well as, as Ole Miss next season? So expect three more home games and two more road games. 
but you know, you have at Virginia, Idaho, SDSU at home, you're at North Texas. Obviously, UW is going to either be the, the 20th or the 27th, and then obviously Oregon State. So you've got four former power, four schools on, on the schedule already. And, and, you know, Coach Dicker came out in his press conference on Monday and said, you know, hopefully we can expect to hear more announcements soon. So obviously, it seems like they know what the next three to four opponents are and just kind of waiting for uh, that to be official. And to remind you, Cougue fans, through next year, they're technically, you know, building out an independent type schedule. After next year, they will have to have eight teams within the conference, after which a majority of their schedule will be built out from that conference that the Pac-12 is now building. So now we'll get into the Boise State game, but first we got to do our social media post of the week. If you see a social media post talking Cougs college football that you want us to talk about, make sure to tag the Couch GM on Twitter, on Instagram send me a DM. I'll make sure to to get it in here. But it was a comment on last week's YouTube video uh, from Mr. America. And he says, go Cougs. Been loving the content from you. I would love to see Dylan's recording quality, background, aesthetic, more closely match yours. Dylan, your your response. Mr. American, I just want to go out and say thank you so much for bringing this up to me and, and letting me know that I needed to get better. And we did. We're on the road and, uh, you know, we're, we're going to get that quality up next. Speaking of getting better, the Cougs are looking to get better the rest of this year. I, real quick, I have to give credit where credit is due. The, you know, Washington State lost to Boise State in Boise. They faced the Heisman winner for 2024. You know, that's the reason why they lost that game. That's the reason why Boise State is going to do what they're doing. Ashton Genty, through five games now, has 1,031 rushing yards, 16 rushing touchdowns on just 95 carries. He's averaging 10.8 per carry. I was playing Dylan last night. He was Boise State. First play of the game, Ashton Genty breaks out an 80-yard touchdown run. I was like, hey, well, I guess it is realistic. Like, you know, I can only be so mad. That's just what he does. And looking at prior three running back Heisman winners through their first five games, Derrick Henry had 570 rushing yards. Mark Ingram, 487. Reggie Bush back in 2005, 601 rushing yards. Ashton Genty is blowing all these guys out of the water. What he's doing is unprecedented. And it's not a WCU problem. That's an Ashen Genty is a problem. And again, I'm just so happy for our, our Boise, Boise, not Z, Boise. State fans out there. Um, it's Genty. Genty. We also had some yeah pe- people commenting on our preview on how to properly pronounce. You know, it's always tough. But, you know, WCU is looking to recover after their bye week. And Dylan brought up a a pretty wild stat that Jake Dickert himself at Washington State after week four is currently four and 13 all time. So we're looking to right the ship for WCU this year. But Jake Dickert is also looking to right the ship for his coaching career at WCU after week four, getting these guys motivated and finishing out the season strong. Yeah, no question about it. You know, are already 0-1 this season after week four. Big time game, obviously, in Boise. Sell out largest crowd they've ever had in their history. Shout out Wabzu on that. So, you know, this is going to be a road game. It's at Fresno State. Those fans, you know, they pack their stadium well. And not to mention, Fresno State got their ass kicked by UNLV last time out. So now you're dealing with a, a team that is obviously have a bad taste in their mouth. They've got a home game. They're looking for something to prove with, I guess, the the two big boys of the Pac-12 in, in WSU and Oregon State. You know, I wish I could, could make it up there this weekend. It would have been fantastic. It was, it was great camaraderie with all the Boise State fans and and just kind of the, the buzz of being in the Pac-12 and being conference mates. You know, I'm sure the Cougs that travel down there are going to enjoy it. So, yeah, I mean, big time. Obviously, last year, you know, we start out 4-0, I believe as high as 13th in the nation. And then you have the UCLA disaster where you, you've got the lead going into the fourth quarter and it kind of crumbled away. And then, you know, our, our kicker developed the yips over that season. I mean, he makes some kicks. We're a seven and five, eight and 14. Also, Cam Ward scrambles at, at UW. We probably are kicking a, a field goal there to beat him. This is going to be on the staff this week. Like, come out get the dub and move on to next week and kind of clear these, these second half season woes. And you mentioned the Apple cup there briefly, how, uh, you know, UW kicked a field goal last year to win the game. Now Brady gross is looking pretty gross. He's been missing quite a few field goals for the Huskies, but now moving on to, you know, Fresno state, 
They're at Fresno State is currently three and two. Washington State has a 61.5% probability of winning the game. They are favored currently only by three and a half. So it's going to be a close game. It's going to be 84 degrees down there in Fresno, California at game time. It's a four o'clock start. This game will be on Fox Sports 1, not the CW. So make sure to tune into that. And we'll see how John Matier bounces back. You know, that was a tough Boise State game for him. He had, let's see, 20 carries for 28 yards, an average of 1.4, largely because I believe it was seven sacks for 67 yards lost in that Boise game. So we'll see if Fresno State takes a similar approach like Boise did to where they had kind of that QB spy type defense, if they can contain Matier, if they have more design quarterback runs like they started out the Boise State game with. And then also we'll see if they can bring out that deep ball uh, to, to Kyle Williams and some of those other wide receivers. Yeah, speaking of wide receivers, let's kind of just go into a little bit of an injury update here. Carlos Hernandez obviously hurt in in uh, in camp. He's expected to make his his debut this season. Safety Adrian Wilson is hopeful. You have Tanner uh, safety Tanner Moku's available, and then from the kicking side of things, Dean Janikowski has been kicking and punting all year long, and you you got to think that's affecting the kick uh, the field goal kicking side of things. Nick Harborer iffy on making his season debut and then kickoff specialist Ryan Harris is doubtful. So, you know, expect Dean to possibly handle kickoff field goal and punt again this weekend. But uh, a a big addition is going to be Jamari Colson. We don't know if he's going to start yet. Dickard expects him to play though, but if you can get Adrian Wilson and and Jamari Colson back, that does wonders for the secondary going forward into the season. It's nice to see a guy like Ethan O'Connor, you know, get some reps early in the season and, and kind of build up some depth at that position as we go in uh, later into the season. But you're just hoping for the Cougs to get healthy here. And obviously, hey, we're coming off the bye week, and, and that's that's what you expect to happen is you start to see more and more guys come back um, off their feet during that bye week. And, you know, really looking forward to see how Wazoo starts this game. out. You know, Fresno State, their first game of the year against Michigan, lost 30 to 10, but didn't look too bad in that game. So, you know, this is going to be a big one on the coaching staff and this is a game you have to get. Okay. You know, when we take a look at, at their, at their schedule over the rest of the season, I mean, at Fresno state at Oregon state are, are really kind of your two big bugaboo games that are left on the schedule. So, you know, we'll see, we'll see how they approach this, but the schedule is there to rattle off another six wins. And the Cougs will have a chip on their shoulder coming into this game. If you think back to December of 2022, the Cougs last lost to Fresno State in that bowl game. And actually, wide receiver Kyle Williams, now for the for the Cougs, he played three seasons at UNLV, and he lost three times to Fresno State. And he was quoted saying, nah, I don't like them. I don't like them, boys. Also, offensive lineman Essa Pole stated, Fresno State, they did offer me. They were one of the first Mountain West schools to offer me. I think they're a good program, honestly. I don't really like them, he said. He said that there are some hard knocks, but I feel we are too. He said that other teams have been getting a lot of publicity, saying that they're tough and and physical, including Boise State, also including Fresno State. And he stated that I feel like the more I hear about other teams, the more I just feel confident in us. So it should be a good matchup. There will be some emotion on the line there and some, some history that the Cougs are looking to be on the right side of moving forward. Dylan, what are you, what are your thoughts on kind of the tension there? And then the thoughts of the game. Prove it. Missed tackles left and right all season long. Prove it. Prove you're the more physical team. Go out and prove it this weekend because you weren't more physical against Boise State. They clapped you guys around up and down that field all game long. The defensive line at Boise State struggled to get pressure on the quarterback up until that weekend. John Matier was on his butt all game long. So how about you protect as well? I'm coming. I'm kind of coming at the Cougs here. This is a show me game. You lose this game, you're losing a lot of credibility with the fans going in later in the season. Okay, still have a 10 win season on the docket. This is a game you cannot blow. And if you guys think you're more physical, more physical, go out and prove it. The Cougs are looking to wreck the ship. And like you mentioned, the rest of their schedule is in their favor. You know, outside of this Fresno State game, they've got at Oregon State. But the the toughest games of the schedule have already happened. And let's let's see if they can be that more physical team. I'm curious of your thoughts on the use of Wayshawn Parker 
and the running game so far this year? And what do you think on, you know, their passing versus rushing attempt so far? I think you need to give way Sean the ball. You need to establish a run early, you know, whether it's, it's, it's going even into a read option type of look where you're making Mateer make the decision if he's going to give the ball to way Sean or if he's going to tuck it. I would like to see WSU establish the run early and then open up play action plays down the field and that passing game. I mean, our bread and butter so far this, this season has been running the football, whether it's Mateer, way Sean Parker, Go after the run this week, and then hopefully things can open up for the Carlos Hernandez's, the Chris Hudson's, and the the Kyle Williams of the world. Yeah, I mean, you know, Kyle's had had stuff to say this week about Fresno State. Essa's had stuff to say this week about Fresno State. I haven't heard anything from Fresno State players. So the only noise I've heard is on our side. They need to show up. They need to prove it and and go in and, and get this fifth win of the season. Make sure to tune in this Saturday, four o'clock. It'll be in Fresno State. It'll be a great 84 degrees down there. Make sure to like and subscribe. Let us know your comments of the WCU season so far, of your thoughts of this matchup, and be on the lookout for the preview next week.